this is a, a unique history that, which uh, is, is fairly well untold. It's 150 years next year. It's a very interesting history. It's full of people stories. It's full of the most beautiful country in the world and it's worth telling. People say that it was the most significant, the greatest engineering feat in Australian history for the 19th century. It was 36,000 poles across 3,000 miles of land on country that had not been visited by anybody except the Aboriginal people that lived there since John McDowell Stewart had been through 10 years previously. In modern terms, it was equivalent to the arrival of the internet. This is the Powell's Creek Telegraph Station, one of the mighty remnants of the Overland Telegraph Line. Here we're about 200 kilometres from Tennant Creek and we're about as remote as you can get on the line. But these days we're just five kilometres from the Stewart Highway. Uh, interestingly, uh, the first telephone trial was done between Beltana and Strangways, only two or three years after it was invented by Alexander Graham Bell here in South Australia. A very, very early telephone call just along the Overland Telegraph Line. The Overland Telegraph Line ended the geographical isolation and the tyranny of distance for most of Australia. In contrast, the people that lived here were probably some of the most isolated people in the world. There was conflict. There was a few uh, murders of station people and a few retribution trips. Uh, one of the worst was from Pales Creek. Charles Johnson uh, was the original or well, the first telegraph master here in 1872 and in 1875 he was at Daly Waters and he had to go with a couple of other blokes to Roper River to look for some government horses and he was speared and killed there and the other two survived, one of them died later. Uh, but there was a retribution party uh, that set forth led by John Little who was the head postmaster general and he led a retribution trip to the uh, Roper River which possibly killed 50 or 60 Aboriginal people. And nobody really knows because they wouldn't say. What is probably less understood are the individual atrocities where people were, uh, they came across uh, a group and uh, committed, committed atrocities that nobody ever heard about. This is the grave of Alfred Pivas, a veteran of the construction team and a linesman for 29 years. These are lonely and evocative places. They had to send one of the men forward to the telegraph station to say there's a woman with us so that the men could dress properly, put their shirts on or whatever they had to put on uh, to uh, not offend the lady of the party. Funny enough, the local Aboriginal people, according to Emily, uh, thought that there were no white women until she arrived. She was the first one they'd ever seen. You're the great-great-grandson of Charles Todd himself, I believe. Yes, we're, we're, we're tarred with the, uh, the Charles Todd brush um, and very proud of his achievements. You know, it took a while to track you down. I rang every Todd in the Televan book in Adelaide. <laughs> and they all said, no, no not me. <laughs> it wasn't until I went to Sydney and I found you on a, on a radio show. That, that's how I got to you eventually. The Overland Telegraph Line was uh, a means of communication for a, a Australia in 1872 to ameliorate the, the tyranny of distance, uh, which was a problem because England, another country, was so far away and, and news and information would take weeks and months to get here. Uh, once the Overland Telegraph Line was linked to the undersea cable that went off to Java and to Singapore and all stations to, to London, uh, news could come within seven hours. It's one thing to talk about 
the Overland Telegraph. It's another thing to actually be there on the ground and begin to appreciate the enormity of the task. The area north of Alice towards Tennant Creek and so on, that's really harsh country. So it's not a place for the faint-hearted. This is one of Australia's greatest stories and it needs to be told. People need to know about it.